And what we want to do is look to what was a fantastic race of yesterday. Are we going to get a repeat of that when it all came down to the very last corner, having led really from laps three through to 24? Harvey Clarish must have already been rehearsing his acceptance and winner's speech. Not to be, because Charlie Farrer, who had shadowed him from lap three right the way through to lap 24.9%, on the very last corner, he went around the outside to take the victory by 21 thousands of a second. Will we get anything close to that? Well, this is the Honda British Talent Cup. These are the young chargers of tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. They are all mounted on identical uh, NSF 250R motorcycles, which makes it a totally even playing field for the sole British Motor 3 Championship class for 2020. Now into its third year, and uh, the each rider providing his own bike this year, but now with the addition of Honda UK backing this championship series, and uh, indeed, uh, it's reasonably looking because the winner of each race gets uh, 500 quid and for these 12, 13, 14 year olds that could turn a young man's head and uh, they uh, even the 10th ride home gets 50 quid and uh, the championship the champion will get 5,000 quid second 3,000 and third 2,000 and Dorna even pitch in at the end of the season because Dorna will select one rider from the British series to compete in the 2021 FIM Motor 3 Junior World Championship in Spain and Portugal and two riders from our series to compete in the 2021 Red Bull Motor GP Rook his cup selection. That is uh, what's at the end of it for these young young chargers. Uh, yesterday's results saw Charlie Farrer get the victory then by 21,000 second from 16, Harvey Claridge. Eddie O'Shea came home third. That's number eight, Eddie O'Shea from 17, Franco Bourne. 52, Evan Belford. 74, James Cook. 75, and this was a young 12-year-old that really impressed me yesterday and only his second me yesterday and only his second ever race meeting on the big wheels coming from Minimoto. Jonathan Garness, number 75, 43 Three, Ryan Hitchcock, uh, 46, Elliot Dufton, and the top 10 rounded out by number 15, Harrison Crosby. New lap record was set by Harvey Claridge at uh, what 61.473, 96.06 miles per hour. The, the name we were anticipating to be on the top step of the podium, he managed to fall off in the race. And that, the 13-year-old Casey O'Gorman, born in Port Leash in the Republic of Ireland, and lives with the family down there at Erith in Kent. But it, uh, he was leading, uh, but he went went down and that left the way clear so he will be on the grid and he's on the front row of the grid from the fastest lap times of yesterday the grid today sees the uh, rider who finished second yesterday in pole position number 16 harvey claridge yesterday's race winner in the center of the front row of the grid that is uh, 71 charlie farrer and casey gorman who did crash out of the lead he rounds out at the front row number 72 row three it's row two rather sees number eight eddie o'shea he finished third yesterday uh, alongside him will be 17 franco born who finished fourth yesterday and row two completed by the fifth place finisher of yesterday number 52 evan belford row three 74 james cook 75 jonathan garnis and 15 harrison crosby row four 37 cory tinker 48 ollie walker 65 alexander rowan row five 46 elliot dufton 43 ryan hitchcock 7 jamie lyons row six sees 44 lucas hill 11 rossi dobson and the delightful young annabelle thomas abdi thomas number 66 as we go to row seven 69 Gary Scott, 14 Evan Pedrill, 2 Reese Coates, and uh, on the back row will be number 5 Mason Johnson, 27 Callum Beach, and 9 0 Harry Cook. Three minutes till one lap. Let's just touch base then down with Larry. All done up, done up, shone down there, Larry, so there's no uh, shenanigans as to what tyres they've selected. Uh, normally, they will just be uh, either on the full treaded done ups or on the full slicks, and obviously, dry, it's all done up slicks. Yeah, absolutely. The big question, I guess, Fred, is uh, can Casey O'Gorman, he's, he's one of these guys that, uh, to put it crude, he either win it or you bin it, don't you, with poor Casey? He had that technical error appointment, disappointment at Snetterton when the gear lever broke. But apart from that, a couple of uh, accidents, uh, crashes that he's had, he really needs to start racking the points up. I think he, uh, with all due respect to all the riders out there, is the rider with uh, the most talent, I, I think, in this one. If you, if you were an expert, you would actually put your five shillings on him rather uh, than on A and other, if, wouldn't you? If I was still in old money, Fred, yeah, five uh, shillings. That reminds me, the Fred Clark rider of the day. I hope you've got your 20 pence ready for later on. But uh, ready to go on this one. I think that uh, we have a full contingent. Can't see anybody in pit lane, so I think we're ready to 
go. I think the guarantee will be, and let's hope he doesn't let me down on this one, is that the, the, the red, the blue, and the white colour coding of Micro Lies uh, for John Creswell, uh, being ridden there by Casey O'Gorman, will get the whole shot. He is on the front row of the grid, but power to weight very much in his favour. One or two of these riders, they're so, so minute that they cannot, that, uh, with a minimum weight limit, they cannot carry uh, the extra weight that they would require to bring themselves up to the, the minimum limit because it would make the bike unstable and not safe. So it's, it's amazing. They are absolutely minute, some of these riders out there, but what lovely characters they are. I did spend a long time talking with uh, Jonathan Garness's father, the 12-year-old Jonathan from Ilfracoon, Ilf Ilf Jonathan, who is on row number three, the 75 rider, I say just 12 years of age, and uh, with a 12-year limit, he could not contest the first round at Donington Park because he was too young. He was not old enough to do just that. In uh, the number 16, then sitting there in pole position, and that is Harvey Clarence, 15 years of age, races out of staining in West Sussex. He got second place yesterday, and not for the first time, because at Donington Park, eighth and second, and Snetterton, fourth and third. And if we add the points to the, uh, the points were scored yesterday to what they brought forward, I can tell you that the championship is headed by Franco Born by just five points from Eddie O'Shea. He was only one point ahead of Harvey Claridge. He was only seven points ahead of Charlie Farr. You're absolutely right in what you say about Casey O'Gorman, Larry, because he's a further 20 points in arrears. And of the five races thus far, he's only finished two of them but he's won both of them. That is for number five, Casey, uh, number 78, uh, Casey O'Gorman. 72, get it right, uh, Casey O'Gorman, 30. I did actually uh, stop the car when I was coming out uh, on the perimeter road on the outside of the circuit here, coming to the comedy box. Casey and his father were stopped at the main gate. I just popped, uh, stopped the car, went across to ask Casey what had gone wrong. And he just said uh, the suspension setting that got wrong and uh, down he went. All four foot 11 and a half inches of him, 38 kilograms of him, uh, Casey O'Gorman. We've said it before, he's normally a rider you talk to and not with but that was the most loquacious I've known the young man to be he was holding quite a, uh, a long conversation with me this uh, earlier on today was Casey O'Gorman his father did say to me that uh, when he was at school he was just so so shy and retiring uh, and he was saying in his uh, Republic of Ireland accent that the, the, the teachers used to talk about the, the boy who didn't talk and he's the boy who didn't talk is Casey O'Gorman but boy does he talk when he's on a motorcycle he's just back from Spain he was actually racing in Spain last weekend running in the European Talent Cup was Casey O'Gorman. You know what I thought? Frank Carson had all of a sudden joined the commentary team there. Here's the way tell him. <laughs> he doesn't need any encouraging folks. That's, that's, that's nearest to a compliment of my impression to I've had Larry for 20 years from you. And we thought the impressions had actually stopped. Fred, we were getting a bit worried. Well, I, I do like, I must admit, I do like the, the uh, accent from south of the border. The, the Jack Kennedy brogue there, being a, a, a fan of Stop, Search and Seize, which uh, is, is uh, on the satellite TV. And, uh, well, who's going to win this one? Are we going to see uh, the same as yesterday? Uh, I certainly think that the party is going to be spoiled here by Casey O'Gorman. I think that party that was enjoyed yesterday by Harvey Claridge and Raceman and Charlie Farrer, they were in the rears of him at the point when he went down. And I think that he, again, will be looking to replicate that. First to come up to take his uh, grid position then is the number 16 of Harvey Claridge. I was saying 15-year-old uh, from Staining in West Sussex. Alongside him, number 71, Charlie Farrer, 18-year-old from Easington Colliery in County Durham. And uh, number 72, Casey O'Gorman uh, from uh, uh, Erith in Kent. Although he does uh, carry, uh, well, one passport, he carries this a Republic of Ireland passport because he was born at Port Leash in the Republic of Ireland, only having stayed in the Republic for two weeks of his life because mum was over there with, uh, with her hubby visiting relations when she gave birth to Casey in the Republic. Uh, on that second row of the grid then is number eight, Eddie O'Shea on the WAM, the Warwick Allen Motorsport entry. And uh, he had a good result yesterday and uh, that's uh, easily identified. We have a delay Fred on the grid Some, because uh, the rider stopped his motor there stored motor there and it is the number 48 then that is Ollie Walker the 12 year old Ollie Walker and in the interest of safety of course he will be pushed into all pit lane they will get the old remote uh, wheelbarrow starter on that one and he will be doing a pit lane start the number 48 rider um because they, it is an engine running close start, obviously, and you ain't going to push start these little bikes out there on the grid, and they cannot delay the start. There it is. It's been started up in the pit lane, so he will get a pit lane start, the number 48, having stalled his motor on the, the line. And, and of course, we... Go. Uh, of course, Fred, because of that, we have the other additional one lap, which will uh, reduce the race by one lap. That's a normal procedure. Yes, it is.
And why is the race distance uh, reduced by one lap? Well, if they get one extra warm-up lap, the one thing that you cannot do, and that is refuel on the racing surface in the eventuality of a spillage, of course, uh, and in the interest of safety. So, of course, uh, if uh, if these um, very technical dads uh, on the, uh, the charges of these youngsters uh, say, well, we've uh, actually put it in almost down to the minimum for the race distance, they could run dry if uh, they uh, went the original race distance, having had to put one extra warm-up warm -up lap in. So it is is quite literally, you know, as Larry Carter says, when they go for an extra sighting lap, then it is reduced, the race distance is reduced. A lot of newcomers in this championship series, and one or two riders that we have seen previously racing in the uh, uh, British Talent Cup, as it was now, of course, under the banner of Honda, and uh, why not? Because these are the Honda 250 NSR uh, Moto3 machines, and uh, basically the machine that Honda uh, first uh, came back into Moto3 World Championships with. Uh, 250cc, uh, four-stroke single cylinder, um, coming up then to take there. Like, uh, the distinctive uh, Michael Ice, John Creswell colour coding, you've got a couple of riders out there running under that. You've uh, actually got uh, Jonathan uh, Garness running for uh, Michael Ice. You've actually got Absey Thomas, who, uh, after Snedderton, changed colours to uh, join the Michael Ice squad as well. But with the Nova, the Nova transmissions name on the City Lifting Honda, backed by Fab Racing, as it says there, sitting coolly, calmly, is the number 16 in pole position, and that is Harvey Clarence. Harvey, he, of course, raced Moto3 last year. He was fourth in the Moto3 British Championship in the standard category, including getting a victory at the Scottish Circuit of Knock Hill. And we are away and racing. Is it going to be Casey Gorman to get the whole shot? into turn number one as they make the dive into turn number one who is it number 72 casey o'gorman that hits the front early on not such a good start there by the number 71 of charlie farry he was in about fourth or fifth place from uh, the front row of the grid he's then third place in actual fact as they make the run up toward becker's corner for this the first time casey o'gorman is your race leader but harvey Clarish tries around the outside successfully around the outside harvey Clarish does just ride into the lead then as they exit and come out on to the wellington straight so your new leader then is uh, yesterday's second place finisher harvey Clarence. He's going to come under pressure here from Casey O'Gorman. Again, the power to wait should help on his acceleration and deceleration. That's Casey O'Gorman back into the lead. In third place then, that's Eddie O'Shea from the second row of the grid. Eddie O'Shea. But here comes Harvey Clarence back once again at the diminutive Casey O'Gorman as they exit then from Luffield 1 into Luffield 2 and then on toward Woodcote Corner. Just, just, just tuck those arms in, tuck those knees in, tuck those toes in and uh, just uh, let the revs rise as they power their way then up toward turn number one. Cops Corner at the end of lap one. O'Gorman, Claridge, O'Shea, Farrah, Belford, Bourne, Tinker, uh, James Cook, Dufton, Garnett, Crosby, Hitchcock, Hill, Lyons, Walker, Dobson, Coates, Scott, Pendrill, Rowan, uh, Thomas, Beach, uh, Harry Cook. And the last rider going through there was uh, the uh, number five of Mason Johnson. We're back with the leaders. They are already up there at Beckett's Corner. And then they get out onto the Wellington Strait. Talking about diminutive riders, the Garnets are uh, saying, Jonathan Garnets, well, he's absolutely diminutive, as also is number 65 out there, Alexander Rowan. Alexander Rowan from Damara in County Down, just four foot seven inches tall, and uh, I believe that he actually gets help from the Davy Wood found, uh, uh, Foundation, or Davy Wood Academy. Davy Wood, of course, for those that uh, remember the, the, the name of Davy Wood, as the manager, personal manager for many, many years of the late, uh, great uh, William Joseph Dunlop. Lead us through then, and uh, at the end of lap number two, that gives us our first flying lap, and the fastest lap there to O'Shea, going through in third position. It was a new lap record yesterday, and Harvey Clarence set the lap record at 61.473. Uh, they're just, uh, well, about 0 0.7 outside of that on this first flying lap. O'Shea put a 62.14 in, but the leading trio have detached themselves just a whisker now. And it is just a whisk by about uh, five yards ahead of the fourth place rider, which is Charlie Farrer, Evan Belford, and uh, then the number 17 of Franco Bourne. That leading trio, O'Gorman, Clary, and O'Shea, 72, 16, and number eight. And back in the lead is uh, Claridge. And indeed, O'Gorman has been pushed back into third place because that is O'Shea going up into second position. The number eight of Eddie O'Shea, the 13-year-old from Swaddling Coat in Leicestershire. 
This is the one at uh, Wham Bam Slam, uh, W-A-M, Warwick Allen Motorsport, a man who helped Charlie Nesbitt uh, to some degree last year. Leaders coming through then to complete this lap. There's lap number three, 62.140. It's your uh, guess he's going to be quicker than that on this lap. Yes, 61.824. Charlie Farrah, fastest rider on the circuit. That is number 71 running in fourth position, Charlie Farrah. Oh, and uh, Clary's then, uh, he loses the lead to O'Shea. That is Eddie O'Shea. That is your race leader, the 13-year-old leading this one, Casey. Gorman, the other 13 year old comes back into second position and now we have got a five make that a six make that a seven uh, way battle this is a 14 wheeled seven cylindered honda at the moment they are that tight as casey O'Gorman just nips smartly on the inside of Claridge, but Claridge fought back at turn one, then got into a bit of a tank slap as he rode the rumble strip on the exit of turn number one. O'Shea, your leader, Claridge in second place, Casey Gorman is there third in fourth place then, it is the number 71, and that is a Charlie Farrer, and Charlie Charlie Farrer, the winner of yesterday's race on the very last corner. Will he uh, utilise the same tactics in there? Can see the number 52 of the 13-year-old Evan Belford. Evan Belford uh, on the city lifting by Ryan Saxby entry. That actually is about the Scott Ogden talk to the British uh, Talent Cup Championship uh, title last year. Evan Belford, he actually had a 100 mile an hour plus off uh, that bike when the engine blew and locked the engine up, cranked over, going through Schwantz Curve in the first round at Donington Park. That's something to talk about in the playground, isn't it, eh? A 13-year-old, I'll impress the young girls there, that fell off at 100 miles an hour, walked away with it, and they actually went out in the second race to finish in fourth position, did Evan Belford, the rider who won the Cool Fab GP70 British Championship last year. This is the freight train now, this is what we expect with the uh, Honda Talent Cup here. This is the freight train of eight or nine riders with Casey O'Gorman back into the lead. A pause there because the attack comes from the number 16 of Harvey Claridge. I think we've actually got, uh, that's the leading out, because that's uh, Tinker, uh, that's at uh, the tail end of that one. I think that that is the number 37 of Corey Tinker on the distinctive uh, green and yellow of Stout for Fluid Power Academy and uh, Brent Gladwin's squad. So that will be, yes it is, the leading eight riders in fact have detached themselves ahead of uh, the uh, number 75 of Jonathan Garnes. So at the end of lap number five, black and white uh, flag with track warning, track limits warning to number 16, Claridge. And if he does that again, he will be hit with a penalty. Uh, whether it be a ride through penalty, whether it be a time added penalty, there is the long track uh, penalty here, which uh, actually is across there at Luffield, the long way around the outside of Luffield Corner. Just count them down here, two, four, six, eight, and straining at the least to hang on to them is Cory Tinker, number 37. Again, coming in toward uh, Brooklyn's, cutting through on the inside. He's a neat little stylish rider, he really is. He's got the old, as uh, the Americans will say, body, uh, body English lean, whereby he uh, leans his body. Oh, tell you, uh, number 52 will also, uh, Evan Belford will be uh, getting his knuckles wrapped, because that was well and truly onto the green stuff was there as well there, coming out of Luffield for Evan Belford. Uh, Gorman, Claridge, O'Shea, Farrah, Belford, uh, James Cook. James Cook, number 74 out there, the younger brother of the 2017 British Standard uh, Category British champion Max Cook. You don't really need to be Einstein to uh, see the difference of the riders out there on the circuit, possibly if you're looking on TV. Just look to the physical stature of number 16, Harvey Claridge, and the physical stature of number 12, which is Casey O'Gorman. And uh, uh, that means that as, uh, certainly more aerodynamic. Those shoulders are tucked behind the bubble for Casey O'Gorman. Not so, though, for Claridge. And he's got his shoulders out in the breeze, and that will be knocking revs off the top end of the power unit. And uh, the part of weight is definitely against the number. 16 running in second place against the flea weight that is the number 72 of Casey O'Gorman. Having said that, O'Gorman is really a uh, prodigious talent, a name we're going to hear an awful lot of in the future. And they come through then to reel off what is lap number seven of the 24 lap into lap number eight. Fastest lap is O'Gorman on a 61.736. 61.736. Getting very, very close to the new lap record set yesterday by Harvey Claridge. The running order at the end of lap number seven. I'm going to keep my eyes on the leaders, but the running order for those listeners who are saying, well, you haven't mentioned our boy out there. Well, it is O'Gorman, Claridge, O'Shea, Farrah, Belford, James Cook, Bourne, Tinker, Hitchcock, Garness are your top 10. Dufton, Crosby, Walker, Lions Hill are your top 15. Coates, Absey, Thomas, Pendrill, Dobson, Rowan, Scott, Harry Cook, Beach, and the final rider still circulating.
circulating is Mason Johnson. I say final rider still circulating. We started 24 and we still have 24 out there on the circuit. But this is becoming quite a showdown here uh, involving the 72 and the 16. O'Shea is looking... Uh, well, he's 0.5 back. I think he may well be going back further than that in third position as the two leaders come through. Gorman from Claridge. Let's just see that. Yes, he's gone up to a clear second. And uh, Clary's now fastest. One minute, uh, 61.466. And that is almost now. Well, that actually is quicker. That is uh, Harry, uh, Harvey Claridge has improved upon his lap record of yesterday. It was a 61.473 yesterday. And he's improved upon that. Uh, 61.466 Harvey Claridge. So the lap record just goes a tad quicker than he set yesterday. It's got to be matched, of course, by Casey Gorman. Casey Gorman's uh, best lap is a 61.558. And that was set on the very last lap. And it is O'Gorman still leading as they come down toward the Brooklyn's left-hander. Just looking to make the move through on the inside. Coming up to challenge for fourth place now. And this is James Cook. He was a, a good uh, good bet yesterday. The 13-year-old Captain Cook, who yesterday finished in sixth position. Well, he, I think, is going to finish higher than that today. He is now moving up to challenge for fifth place. These are your two leaders. So Gorman and Clarence, they get a faller there at Luffield. And that rider quickly up onto his feet and sprinting to a... Well done, sir. That was... Uh, uh, if you don't make it as medicine like a racer, I think you ought to put yourself forward to be in the, uh, the sprint squad for the uh, GB Olympics. Uh, that's the uh, Elliot Dufton, the 15-year-old, that uh, gently tipped off in towards Luffield. And self-preservation being a very strong instinct. He was quick. Oh, and that was a big eyesight. Well, and his, in fact, his handlebars clobbered his own head as the bike went past him. And he was in a sitting position. His bike went past and his own handlebar on the right-hand side and the brake defender just clobbered his head there. He'll have a headache in the morning, that's for sure. And he's uh, lucky to get no more than that because riders are going left, right and centre. And thankfully, thankfully, they did miss him. And, uh, well, Duffy... You'll, uh, you'll uh, save that one, the pictures of that one, something you didn't want to happen, but uh, that uh, happily is uh, okay for the Duffy and Duffers rider, number 46, Elliot Dufton from Toaster. Well, he literally is about five miles, lives about four miles down the road. In fact, it's probably less than that, we're Toaster. Let's get back with the leaders. O'Gorman, O'Gorman still leading then from Claridge. Well, I say still leading. It was uh, when they started the lap, Claridge from O'Gorman, and Claridge just taking him back. Oh, and that has unnerved O'Gorman there because Claridge just rode around the outside of him in toward Brooklands, and that made O'Gorman sit up and take notice on that one. But that was again a plucky, plucky manoeuvre there from number 16, Harvey Claridge, literally just riding around the outside of the uh, erstwhile leader, which is a st uh, Casey O'Gorman. Now, is this the break for victory for the city limits rider back? Of course, by the great name of Ryan Saxelby. Saxe, who um, never won a championship, although he did compete uh, in the British Scooter Championship all those years ago, Ryan Saxelby. But uh, the break now for victory is it for Claridge over O'Gorman. There's 10. Make that 15 yards differential of airspace between the front and the second place rider as they come through. In uh, third place, a comfortable third place, and... Um, uh, one and a half seconds down from the two leaders, but about uh, 0.7 up ahead of the fourth man, and that is Eddie O'Shea, 13-year-old Eddie from Swaddling Coat in Leicestershire. End of lap 11, Claridge, O'Gorman, O'Shea, Balford now ahead of Charlie Farrer. So the number 71, yesterday's race winner, he at the moment is running back in fifth position, ahead then of 17 Bourne, who... Uh, uh, finished fourth yesterday, then uh, James Cook, 74, 37 Tinker, 43 Hitchcock, and Harrison Crosby running with that distinctive New York taxi cab yellow Peter Banks uh, machine, number 15, Harrison Crosby, the 14-year-old uh, rider from Ashford in Kent. Cassio Gorman has not uh, been uh, completely thrown out of the equation here. He has made his way back. Just uh, getting a replay here of the number 46 machine being moved to a position of safety as the leaders themselves are already coming through that particular part of the circuit. I'm just wondering, there weren't yellow flags. Yes, there were. There were yellow flags there. There were yellow flags there. Now, where did that overtake take place there from the number 16? Because uh, that could be the reason for the replay there. They, uh, the marshals were retrieving the number 46 uh, bike of Elliot Dufton. And was that the overtake in toward Brooklyn? If it was, it would have been under yellow flags. And that will be looked at very, very earnestly and seriously by by the race direction. It could be okay. It could be perfectly legit. It was just uh, my thoughts there that they were showing the replay there with the marshals moving the bike. And uh, certainly on the left-hand side there, uh, on the approach toward uh, 
Luffield, the yellow flags were out. Here comes Keisha Gorman on sheer acceleration alone. The power to weight just plays smack into his hands and he just draws straight the way past and picks up 10 yards ahead of Claridge. 72, O'Gorman, 16, Clarence now. This is where Clarence fights back. He's so strong on the corners is the number 16 of Harvey Clarence. Harvey, who's uh, been on the podium, uh, what, uh, three times. He was a uh, second yesterday, had a second at Donington Park. He had a third at Snedderton, did Harvey Clarence. And in terms of the championship itself, uh, it is uh, Harvey Clarence running third, just one point behind Eddie O'Shea. In actual fact, that will be reversed. At the moment, uh, Clarence will go up into second place in the championship. And uh, number 16, long lap penalty. That is it. Gay Advantage gained under yellow flag, so as we thought and conjectured, it is going to be a long lap penalty to the number 16 of Harvey Claridge, who is running in second place. And uh, that is a result of a uh, gaining advantage under the uh, yellow flags. Long lap. Just as long lap signal given to him on the start finish line to the number 16 rider. And uh, his team himself, six flaps, they call him, <laughs> flaps carriage, uh, number 16, and it does say long lap, so he's got to do the long lap penalty, and as I say that, uh, well, there he goes, now he's going, oh, will they judge him to have taken that long lap penalty, he was a bit late entering into it, they don't know why that long lap penalty, but that has pushed him back into third position, uh, so as they come through here, the number 16 goes back into third position. It'll be interesting to see whether they had judged that he did correctly take that long lap penalty because the uh, outside of the circuit clearly marked by the staggered yellow lines and uh, looked like he was a bit late getting into that one. Uh, perhaps they'll not be uh, totally mealy mouthed over there in race control and they may just give him the benefit of the doubt. He has uh, lost the lead, he's lost the second and he's running in third place. So Gorman, O'Shea, Claridge, then uh, Belford, Farrah, James Cork, Bourne, Hitchcock, Tinker Crosby. No change of position, just going down, coming into the points. There's a change there, and that is a critical one for Absy Thomas. Annabelle Thomas, she now has moved up into the points. She picked up two places that last time around by virtue of the fact that young Reese Coast, a 14 year old uh, North Irish rider, he's gone back a couple of places. So Absy Thomas now into 15th position, the number 66 rider. We're just looking back here on the Charlie Farrer. Belford, Farrah's ahead. Farrah, actually, that's why we're looking at that, because Charlie Farrah now has moved ahead of the number 52 of Evan Belford. So that will change the leaderboard when they come through on this lap. O'Gorman, O'Shea, Claridge will then be Farrah, which it is. Then Belford goes back to fifth. Cook, Bourne, Hitchcock, Tinker, Crosby should remain as the top ten riders. Keisha Gorman now has uh, really made the break for victory here. His advantage was 0.5 of a second. I think it is going to be somewhat in excess of that. As uh, Casey, uh, well, there you go. There you go, because uh, the uh, race control confirmed what I saw, and that is number 16, long lap penalty. Did not compete penalty. Sanction repeated. He's got to do it all over again. Has the number 16. He's got to enter into that long lap, not pick it up halfway round. So he's got to repeat that because of non non-complying with it earlier on and uh, yeah just seeing a replay there and he definitely was shy of coming through the um, the back door into the long lap penalty almost, almost going through the back window really to uh, take the short cut into that long lap penalty he's going to uh, have that sanction repeated I hope he uh, work it out <laughs> and we think so well I've done the long lap I've done the long lap what are they talking about um so I hope that he'll work this one out, because if he doesn't, if he doesn't take it within the remaining race distance, then he is going to be disqualified for from the race, I would think. He's back uh, in, uh, well, he must have taken it, because he's gone back into sixth place. Let's just see whether he did sixth place. That was a 61. Yes, he did a 64. That last, that was a 64.1. So the, he must have taken that second penalty on that last lap, and he has picked up with them in sixth position wondering well my head's buzzing on this one could do with the old uh, easy dots is it to uh, stop the old headache and clear thinking on this one but uh, um, these riders know exactly what they've got to do they are taken to a rider's briefing and the judicial clerk of the course and the clerk of the course will tell them exactly what they should or should not be doing and they will tell them exactly how they should execute a long lap penalty so no excuses ignorata juris non excuse that ignorance of the law is no excuse as they say and uh, that uh, ride through penalty number 16 are they still going to hit him with it again uh, ride through penalty did not complete long lap 
Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. This is going to get a bit monotonous here for Clarence. Well, he did a 64 second lap. He's back now into the 61. And I would have thought that 64 second lap must have been a long lap penalty for him. So we'll just keep our eyes on to see whether, because they're still saying on here, number 16 ride through penalty did not complete long lap number 16. Stuck down behind the bubble here, and he's has picked up a few places. He's gone up into 16. Yes, his team there, his team there, are actually uh, number 16 board flaps. It says ride through again. You'll begin to get the hang of this one if you hang on to this one, uh, uh, Harvey. And he's going to have to do it all over again, is Harvey Clarence. So again, can only think that uh, if he did do that second one, again, he was not doing the full long lap. He was going through there at a racing speed that meant he was cutting the... Uh, <laughs> or, in fact, did he run out onto the green stuff on the exit from the long lap? It's all a bit confusing, Larry, for a simple person like me, but the net result is that he's got to do it all over again here. And uh, in the, his camp in the pit lane, waving him on, but it also says, ride through. That's his sister, Lois, hanging the penalty out. And, of course, he'll be just wondering through his mind. He's a sensible lad, is Harvey. But he'll be thinking, well, what have I done wrong? And it'll all of a sudden, the penny will drop. But, uh, yeah, he, uh, he's certainly not going to win this one, is he? It's a shame, really, because I... I think, uh, again, it's a 63-second lap that he's on. I think he may well have uh, tried that uh, long lap penalty twice. And uh, can he get it right on the third attempt there? It'd be interesting to have a word with him, uh, which we'll do before the next round, of course, to see whether he did uh, do it once, twice, or indeed three times. But it was pretty obvious when he did the first time there. And even I spotted it. And I'm not the sharpest penny in the sharpest tool in the box. Um, uh, and even I could see that he was not on the left-hand side of the yellow line entering into the long lap penalty. Here are your leaders. I'll tell you what, whilst all these shenanigans have been going on. Eddie O'Shea has been quietly working away and we have an incident out on the circuit there and the diminished adhesion flag is being shown and there's a bike on the circuit at Luffield of course I think that is. Uh, Luffield out is it? Uh, uh, a rider having gone now Beckett's. That's at Beckett's. A rider having crashed at Beckett's across there as Eddie O'Shea just ran wide on Nixon turn one and the fallen rider over there at Beckett's I think looks to be Evan Pendrell who was running... Well, he was down the order anyway, but yes, red flag. They have stopped the race. They have stopped the race. I think we are at two-thirds race distance anyway, um, because the diminished adhesion flag and in the pit lane is Clarence. He's in the pit lane wondering what, what on earth is going on down there. The number 16 rider of, uh, well, he's accredited with seventh place, but he has gone in toward the pit lane. And I tell you what, Larry, he may not be accredited with a race finish because he is not out and racing at the point that the red flag has been brought out. It could be a complete and utter disaster for the rider, for the rider who runs in third place in the championship, screwing up the uh, ride through penalties and then for whatever reason coming down in toward the pit lane. And he was in the pit lane at the point at which the red flag came out. And it, to me, it, that means he will not be a in the results. I tend to agree with you, Fred, but in mitigation, if I was in Harvey Claridge's camp, I'll say, well, he complied with the instruction from race control, and it wasn't his fault that the red flag came out when it did. So, you know, you could plead a case, couldn't you? But uh, well, we'll wait and see what the result is. He's currently has been accredited with... Uh, i tell you what, Larry, with the strength of that argument, if ever I go to court, I hope I'm up against you, because that, <laughs> that argument you put forward is rubbish. Uh, not sure it is, Fred. I think that he... He, uh, he, he didn't Comply. He thought he complied, but he did not comply with the ride. Not with penalty. the not with the long lap penalty. Correct, correct. But the ride through, which he was undertaking at the time of the red flag, he did nothing wrong. He was complying with the instruction from race control. Pause, pause there, because, yes, you're absolutely right, because it was a ride through, not a long lap. Pause there, because what will happen then, of course, at that point, if I go yeah. back one lap, which he will be accredited with, and I think you could, well, I'll tell you what, Larry, I'll have you on my side you as, the, as the judge for the uh, defence. It's on the screen then, Fred. Uh, ride through penalty equivalent time of 25 seconds, so uh, uh, he will go back one lap, and then 25 seconds will be added onto it, because he was given the one, uh, uh, the ride through penalty before the red flag came out, but he he wasn't able to execute it, so therefore he would have given the 25 seconds. My apologies, Larry. I misjudged you as a uh, sir, as a barrister on that one. It was, of course, two two attempts on the long lap, which were not completed to satisfaction. So he was hence given a ride through penalty, which was the only other option. And as you correctly said, at that point, whilst he was in the pit lane, I, I must admit I didn't see that ride through penalty there. I just looked up onto the screen there. In fact, two riders were involved in that one, and no wonder they brought the the flag out. The second of those riders there looked to be, when well, I went to guess who it was, but they both looked to be okay. Um, yeah, I thought, I, I'm, oh dear, they got hooked up together there, those two riders on the run down toward that other rider there was Reese Coates, number two. 
both of the two riders coming pretty heavily to, to earth, but they are up onto their feet and perfectly okay. I'll tell you what, though, Larry, one thing is certain that uh, Harvey Clarence will remember Silverstone race number two for a long time. He certainly will, yeah. Well, uh, I was worried he was going to run out of fuel. He was taking that many long laps there, just having a chat to the team. Uh, as I said, that's his sister there. He's just sort of like, he's trying to, she's trying to explain to him, well, this is what happened. You didn't take the ride. And he's saying, well, yes, I did. But then, you know, you, the, the problem with Harvey is when he watches that back on the replay, of course, he's just saying, you know, he hasn't got had the, the beauty of the pictures that we've seen. Uh, I think he's just going up to uh, maybe to have a word with race stewards and say, look, I did take, you know, I was kind of penalised when I took the, the long lap but when it's uh, pointed out to him and played back I'm pretty sure he'll see the error of his ways it's all about learning isn't it Fred uh, you know sadly when you're an apprentice at, at uh, the workplace you you know you sometimes you know, have to go for the long stands or the tartan paint don't you and unfortunately he learned from that and uh, he won't make that mistake again. His poor old sister was getting an earful there Larry as well bless her They'll be sat at different sides of the truck on the way home won't they? <laughs> cool crikey so a yeah, great race though again great Great race. Yes, uh, we, we know that the top seven uh, will be as O'Gorman, O'Shea, Farrah, Belford, Bourne, James Cork. Uh, just pause, I think, even with the 22nd penalty, I think that Harvey Courage will pick up nine points. I think he'll be accredited with seventh position. I must say, Larry, that uh, it's not been that many years that we've uh, been involved with uh, long laps. Um, and certainly, never ever having experienced a situation whereby the rider has been adjudged twice not to have completed the long lap penalty, whilst uh, the rider himself thinks that he did, and therefore was given a ride through penalty as the uh, the only other sanction. And had he not have taken the ride through penalty, then he would have uh, got got the ultimate sanction, which would have been the black flag. Well, the result then does confirm here the points uh, that Eddie O'Shea now enjoys a four-point advantage over Franco Bourne, and equal third, Harvey Claridge and Charlie Farrah, who are 12 points down on Franco Bourne. Casey O'Gorman, well, he did help his aspirations there. That's now three finishes, three wins for Casey O'Gorman, meaning he's on 75 points. He's still got a lot of work to do if he's going to win this Honda British Talent Cup uh, for Casey O'Gorman, but... Uh, <laughs> as Larry says, he's either win or bin it for poor old Casey. So uh, we are waiting upon the presentation of that. We will get the result uh, coming across to us very shortly. But I think before we do go for the uh, uh, presentation, time perhaps to cut back to the studio.